Hello, once again, Kenny Jacobs from Bloomington, Illinois. Going to do another video today talking about current events as it relates to Bible prophecy. And I guess the uh, first couple of stories I want to cover today would be a little bit of a continuation of the uh, video I did yesterday about uh, Pope Francis and Pope uh, Benedict. Uh, and uh, what's going on in the Catholic Church at the moment in the Vatican. Uh, the first article... Uh, is entitled, Pope Francis Wants to Know What Rick Warren, Russell Moore, and N.T. Wright Think About Marriage. Uh, trio invited to offer Protestant perspective at the Vatican Conference. Even Southern Baptists know not to turn down an invitation from the Pope. I'm going to stop it real quickly right there, just because I, that's, that's just me, that's what I do. Um, why do Southern Baptists or anybody else need to bow down to the Pope? He is just a man like everybody else on this planet. Uh, definitely, I would go to try to tell him what the Bible says on a certain subject, but we don't need to respect the Pope any more than we do any other person. I know if you're a Catholic, that's a blasphemous statement to make. But the Pope is just a man. Uh, let's go on. Rick Warren, senior pastor of Saddleback, Saddleback Church, and Russell Moore, president of the Ethics and Religious Liberties Commission, will meet Pope Francis and offer an evangelical Protestant perspective as part of a Vatican colloquium on marriage and family held this November 17th through the 19th. I am willing to go anywhere when asked, to bear witness to what we as evangelical Protestants believe about marriage and the gospel, especially in times which, in which marriage is culturally imperiled, uh, wrote Moore, on why he's going to the Vatican, despite his disagreements with the Pope. I can hardly criticize from across the Tiber and then refuse to talk when invited about these matters, he continued. That's especially the case when the American bishops have been resolute in standing with us despite our real differences on questions of religious liberty and the future of the family. Prolific Bible scholar N.T. Wright, the subject of C.T.'s April cover story, has also been invited. Wright and Moore will speak on the same panel on the gathering's second day. Two other Anglican leaders, the United Kingdom's Michael Nazer Ali and Nigeria's Nicholas Oko, are also among the 32 speakers. As the Boston Pentecostal leader, as our Boston Pentecostal leader Jacqueline C. Rivers and Anabaptist leader Johann Christoph Arnold, Mormon, Jewish, Muslim, and Sikh leaders have also been invited. Wow. <laughs> Let me read that again. There's going to be Pentecostals, Anabaptist, Mormon, Jewish, Muslim, and Sikh leaders have also been invited. Guys, if that's not developing the one world religion, what is? Uh, wow. Um, and this, is, this article, again, I'll put all these in the description box so you can read these yourself. Uh, but uh, let's, let's highlight a few other our areas in this. It says, The Pope has increasingly been interacting with a number of notable Protestants. Uh, including Jeff uh, Tunnicliffe and Brian Stiller of the Rural Evangelical Alliance, Pastor Joel Olstein, televangelist Kenneth Copeland and James Robeson, members of the Green family, that's founders of Hobby Lobby, and Westmont College President Gail Beebe. We are brothers, Francis told a gathering of Pentecostal leaders at a Copeland conference. Uh, let's, let's see here. Uh, Following Francis' ascent to the papacy, Moore told C.T. that he admired the Catholic leader's track record of living among the, among the poor and caring for social outcasts. I pray that his example spurs evangelicals like me to remember our mandate to love the least of these, the hurting and the vulnerable, the brothers and sisters of our Lord, he said. Uh, but not all have warmed to Francis' overtures to evangelicals. In July, a near totality of Italian evangel evangelicals warned U.S. evangelicals against getting too cozy with the Catholic Church. What appear to be similarities with the evangelical faith and spirituality of sectors of Roman Catholicism are not in themselves reasons for hope in a true change. World leaders wrote for the, for the Italian Evangelical Alliance, 
the Federation of Pentecostal Churches and the Assemblies of God in Italy. A few weeks later, Francis made an unprecedented visit to a Pentecostal church where he apologized for Catholics' past persecution of other Christians. Uh, CT's previous coverage of Pope Francis includes five things evangelicals will cheer in the Pope's plan to change the Catholic Church. All right. So here we go again. He's gathering all sorts of different beliefs together at the Vatican. Uh, again, he's Mormons, uh, Anabaptist, Jewish, Muslim, Pentecostal, Sikhs. That's the one world religion forming. Um these, none of these people believe any near, anywhere near the same thing, and they're not worshiping the same God. You can't get them all together and, and do anything that God is going to honor. I, I quote this verse every day. I'm going to quote it again. Jesus Christ himself said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. This is a bad situation. It's growing and it's going to form the one world church. Now, I, I could go on and say so much about this, but uh, I'm going to try to keep this video somewhat short today. Um, but let's, let me ask you this. Isn't the Pope supposed to be the vicar of Christ, the representative of Jesus on earth? And if so, why does he want other people's opinions? If, the, if Catholicism is the truth, what's he looking for? The reality is, it's not the truth. And he's not the vicar of Christ. As I said at the opening of this video, he is just a man. He is just a fallible, sinning, sinner man that needs to be, hopefully, redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Born again. And if he's not, he will wind up in the pits of hell just like everybody else who doesn't accept Jesus Christ as the sole source of salvation. And as I did the video yesterday, I'm pretty certain he's the false prophet. And read Revelation and you can find out what that will mean and where he will end up. Um, but, uh, you know, again, if he has all the truth, what's he looking for? Why is he asking for advice? And why is he turning to people who do not believe the same God? Allah is not God. Sikh leaders, <laughs> guys, this is unbelievable. How, how fast he is moving toward the one world religion right now. And everybody is just falling into step. So, this is, again, he's having a uh, conference about marriage. So, in this article, the Pope never seems to say anything about what the Bible might say about marriage. So, let's go to the real source of truth. Let's go to the Bible and read a few passages of what the Bible says about marriage. Genesis, chapter 2. You don't have to go very far into the Bible to find out. Second chapter, Genesis, chapter 2. Let's read verses 18 and 21 through 24. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. Uh, verse 21, And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs, and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. <clears throat> That passage right there pretty much declares that God created marriage and he made it between a man and a woman. It's pretty clear. Let's go further. And I'm going to stop off here in Genesis chapter 4 verse 1 because I'm going to throw some truth at you toward Catholic doctrine again right here. Let's go to Genesis chapter 4 verse 1. And Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived, and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived. The word knew in the Bible stands for marital relations. 
The Catholics believe that Mary was a perpetual virgin and never had children, and that is not what the Bible teaches. And if you stop off in Matthew chapter 1, verses 24 and 25, it says, Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and he took unto him his wife, and knew her not until she had brought forth her firstborn son. And he called his name Jesus. Genesis 4.1 Adam knew Eve his wife and she conceived. Matthew 1 At the beginning of the Old Testament, that phrase is used. Beginning of the New Testament, that phrase is used again. Adam knew her not until... Didn't say Adam... No, excuse me. Joseph knew her not until she brought forth her firstborn son. Not Never knew her. Knew her not until. And then it says her firstborn son. And if you contrast that with John 3.16, where it says that Jesus is God's only begotten son, it doesn't say only son in Matthew 1. Mary was not a perpetual virgin. Mary had other children. Jesus had half-brothers and sisters. Let's go to Mark chapter 10. Verses 2 through 12. And the Pharisees came to him and asked him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife, tempting him? And he answered and said unto them, What did Moses command you? And they said, Moses suffered to write a bill of divorcement and to put her away. And Jesus answered and said unto them, For the hardness of your heart he wrote you this precept. But from the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. For this cause, man shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. And they twain shall be one flesh, so when they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. And in the house his disciples asked him again of the same matter, and he saith unto them, Whosoever shall put away his wife, and marry another, committeth adultery against her. And if a woman shall put away her husband, and be married to another, she committeth adultery. You know, that's a very straightforward, very simple answer, straight from Jesus Christ himself, and he quoted Genesis. The problem is the world just doesn't want to hear that. The world doesn't want to hear the truth. The world just wants to continue to live their own way and create a God that suits their own lifestyle. They don't want to really know the truth and they don't want to live by the word of God. Um, let's move on to another very interesting story. Uh, this is a... Again, this is a... a for the Free Republic, but um, I've seen it covered in several different sources again. Uh, let me use a different one. Um, let's go to, here we go, let's out of cnsnnews.com. Cardinal Burke, I am praying very fervently that this coming year, that this confusion will stop. Interesting, he uses the word confusion. Cardinal Raymond Burke, the Prefect of the Sacred Tribunal of the Apostolic Signatura, the highest court of the Catholic Church, said in an interview, uh, recorded Friday, that he sees a very serious responsibility to try to correct as quickly and as effectively as possible the scandal caused by the midterm report that was published during the Synod of Bishops discussing the family that met in Rome earlier this month. In an interview, Burke discussed Catholic teaching on marriage, homosexuality, and the rights of the children. Uh, then we just go down to the following, the, the final paragraph here. And he says, And so, I am praying very fervently that this coming year, that this confusion will stop, and instead, there will begin to be a strong emphasis on the beauty of the truth of the church's teachings on marriage and on human life and human sexuality, he said. Um, 
So he's, he uses the word confusion. Confusion came out of the Synod at the Vatican. Um, again, I thought Catholicism was the truth. I thought when they went to elect a pope, they went into the conclave and were led by the Holy Spirit to elect a true pope, a vicar of Christ, an infallible representative of Jesus Christ on earth. Then how do they have all these conflicts and confusion and disagreement? And how do they keep coming up with all these dogmas and doctrines that are con completely contrary to Scripture? 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33 says, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. By the way, right there, it says in all church is, plural, of the saints. That backs up what I said and always say, that there are over 30,000 supposedly Protestant denominations and one Catholic denomination, but all of them claim to be Christian. In other words, there are multiple churches that claim to be Christian churches, and the one truth of all of that is following Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter which of those churches you're in, if you are born again, believing in Jesus Christ, putting your faith in Him and Him alone, being saved by grace through the atonement of Jesus at Calvary, there's nothing else you can do for salvation, period, nothing. And it doesn't matter what church you belong to, as long as you're part of the bride of Christ, the body of Christ, you are part of the church. The church is the body of believers. Born again believers in Jesus, no matter what denomination, no matter what country, no matter what city in the history of the world since the church was formed 2,000 years ago. And it, it says right here, God is not the author of confusion. So God had nothing to do with that synod. God apparently didn't have anything to do with the conclave that elected Pope Francis. And it says here, but of peace as in all churches of the saints. Churches, plural. Yes, there's really only one true church. No question about that. There's one true church. There's one truth. As I said before, Jesus Christ said himself he's the way, the truth, and the life. But there are multitudes and multitudes of Christian denominations that claim to follow Jesus Christ. And anybody within any of those denominations is born again, is a member of the true church. How can you avoid all these conflicts, all the chaos, all of the confusion over church teaching and traditions and, and, and doctrine? Very simple. You forget all these church traditions that conflict with Scripture. Use Scripture alone. The Bible is the infallible Word of God. Period. This is what we need. This is all we need. We don't need all the church fathers' teachings that contradict the Bible. But because Catholicism is full of that, you can see what's going on right now. And again, I'm going to stand behind the video I did yesterday. I just really believe in my spirit that God is leading me to show me that. That uh, Pope Francis is a false prophet. And I'm I've got a strong feeling that Pope Benedict will be the Antichrist. The schism in the church. There are lots of people supporting Pope Benedict right now. Um, and what Pope Francis is doing to bring on this one world religion is a uh, very, very dangerous thing if you're a member of the Catholic Church or at the Vatican. Revelation 17, 18, describe... The destruction of Mystery Babylon. Um, I'm just going to read a few more headlines I see right here. Does the Pope does Pope Francis have an enemies list? That's interesting. Um, Bobby Jindal, silent on Pope Francis's belief in evolution and the Big Bang Theory. Uh, U.S. Cardinal slams Pope Francis over softer approach to homosexuality. Pope Francis praised exorcists 
says group who won the battle against evil is uh whatever. Um You know, never mind. I'll leave that one alone for now. I'll do a video later on that one. Um, Pope Francis to open inter interreligious conference on traditional marriage. Uh, Judas was not so bad, says Pope in homily. That's that's interesting. Uh, I'll maybe research that one more and add that to a video in the next few days. Guys, it's getting out of control what's going on in the Vatican. It's that simple. It, things are moving so fast there. Uh, I'm going to go to one other scripture here real quick. Second Timothy. Second Timothy, chapter 4. Come on. Uh... Verse 34, or excuse me, verse 3 and 4. Second Timothy 4, verses 3 and 4. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust they shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. The beliefs and the teachings of Pope Francis... It's promoting right now is a definite apostasy. It's a turning away from the truth. And there are fables. They are completely against the word of God. But that's what it says. People will not endure sound doctrine anymore. They want to create their own God. They want a God that suits their own lifestyle. And that's why this whole synod on the family... Uh, and marriage is taking place. All right, let's move on to uh, another subject. Uh, several news stories I want to cover as well, real quickly, on uh, Israel and what's going on over there. Uh, out of the Times of Israel today, top EU diplomat calls for Palestinian state within five years. Oh, come on. All right. The European Union's new foreign policy chief called for the creation of a Palestinian state within the within the first five years of her term, and announced that the EU intends to play a more influential role in the Middle East than it has in the past. Again, I think it's very, very interesting that the EU is going to get more and more involved in the Middle East because uh, Daniel 9.27, or Daniel 9, let's just go to that real quick. I guess I can't make short videos anymore. I'm sorry. There's just so much going on, and I always want to try to get Scripture in here as well. Uh... Let's start at Daniel 9.25. Know therefore and understand from the going forth of the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem unto the Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and threescore and two weeks and the street shall be built again in the wall even in troublous times and after threescore and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off but not for himself and the people of the Prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary and the end thereof shall be with a flood and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week he shall cause a sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate, even unto the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. That one week there is Daniel's 70th week, and it will begin when the Antichrist will confirm the covenant with many, and in verse uh, 26 it says, And the people of the prince that shall come um, shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And that, again, that was the Roman Empire in A.D. 70. And, um, the, so the EU, and the, the European Union, the revived Roman Empire, is going to get more and more involved in the peace process. And whoever the Antichrist will be will end up confirming the covenant. Uh, what's important for me is not whether the co other countries, be be they European or not, recognize Palestine, Frederica Mogherini told the European press Tuesday, referring to Sweden's mo recent recognition of a Palestinian state, I'd be happy if during my mandate the Palestinian state existed. Uh, again, I'm going to put it's a long article, a lot of good information in it. I just wanted to cover that briefly, and um, I will again post it into the description box. Um, 
let's go down and find another article here. Fatah urges Palestinians to block Jews from the Temple Mount on Wednesday. Abbas also recently called on loyalists to use all possible means to prevent settlers from entering the Al-Aqsa Mosque. So every single day we're seeing more and more chaos and frustration growing about the Temple Mount. And I just read Daniel 9.27 about the abomination of desolation where the Antichrist will enter the third temple. As you can see, the Temple Mount's in the news every day right now. The third temple will be built soon. And three and a half years into the final seven-year period of time, the Antichrist will enter that temple, desecrate it, and declare himself to be God. False prophet working with him. Again, Francis and possibly uh, uh, Benedict working together would uh, enforce the, the worship of, of the Antichrist and the uh, Mark of the Beast system. Uh, let's go on down here to another article. Sorry guys, a lot of articles I'm scrolling through to find it. Erica asks Kerry to support Palestinian bid at UN. During DC meeting, Chief Palestinian Negotiator pushes Washington to recognize Palestinian state. Uh, Senior Palestinian official Saeed Arakat appealed to U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry to support Palestinian statehood efforts at the United Nations Security Council on Monday night. Arakat in Washington also asked Kerry to recognize a Palestinian state based on the 1967 borders with a capital in East Jerusalem as a response to the recent Israeli announcement that it would build hundreds of housing units in East Jerusalem. Urgent steps from the international community to protect the two-state solution are needed, Arakat said. We urge the U.S. administration to support our bid to the U.N. Security Council in order to establish the borders of a Palestinian state. The U.S. is thought to be likely to block a Palestinian proposal to the Security Council uh, to set a date within two years for an Israeli pullout. However, the U.S. reported reportedly nervous about ex exercising its veto on the measure and inviting Arab Iris engaged in efforts to convince Ramallah to keep from bringing the proposal to the table. <clears throat> U.S. officials said earlier Monday that no American framework for a peace plan would be presented during the meeting with Erekat. There are no current plans to introduce a peace plan. Kerry's bid to broker a peace deal uh, failed earlier this year. Um, Jen Psaki insisted the United States would be, a willing, would be willing to be a capable partner if there was a move to resume negotiations but said there was no current evidence of that. Uh, to that end, Kerry was planning to put forward some proposals on the way forward, uh, the Palestinian official said, asking not to be named. Uh, but again, Palestinians want a UN resolution to do it because they don't want to do it through negotiations and have to actually negotiate and make some compromises and give in on certain things. Um, well, but... Uh, Guys, eventually, whether we recognize them or not by through the UN, whether we uh, force them to sign an agreement, whether uh, we, we, pull, we might pull away. I mean, the United States might pull away, and the EU very well could be the ones that take over this peace negotiation. Uh, but either way, ultimately, the Obama administration, the United States, is making it very clear that they support the two-state solution and taking the land away from Israel. Uh, there was one other article I can't find now, and I want to find it for you. The title was, Iranians Mark the Fall of the U.S. Embassy. Here it is, with flag burning. Demonstrators also chant, Death to America and Death to Israel, Death to Britain. <laughs> wow. Okay, 
in Tehran, ter several thousand Iranians gathered outside the former U.S. Embassy in Tehran on Tuesday to market storming by students 35 years ago, burning the American flag. In what was, has become an annual spectacle, demonstrators chanted death to America and death to Israel, death to Britain. This year's gathering coincided in Iran with Ashura, the commemoration of the killing of Imam Hussein in one of the holiest days of, in Shiite Islam, the country's predominant faith. Um, that's all, I'll, again, I'll post this in the description box. But um, Okay, so in Iran, they're chanting, burning American flag, chanting, death to America, death to Israel, death to Britain. Yet, Barack Hussein Obama is continuing to trust that Iran wants their nuclear program for peaceful purposes. Wake up! Guys, he is trying to bring down America and Israel, bring on to one world government. It's that simple. It's incredible. And, and, and how Israel is putting up with it, what is stopping Israel right now from attacking Iran and wiping them out so they can't build a nuclear weapon? Wow. Uh... Can you see the Psalm 83 war forming right before our very eyes in the Gog and Magog war of Ezekiel 38-39? Unbelievable. All right, I want to look at one more news story. Uh, Saudi Arabia today. France moves to vote on Palestine recognition. Following suit, suit with Sweden and, Pal and Britain, socialist French lawmakers propose a vote calling the PA a state. Uh, that's good enough. I'll post that into the... Uh, description box as well. But again, you can see most of Europe now starting to recognize the Palestinian state. Palestinians are appealing to the United Nations for a resolution to force Israel to vacate the land. God gave them the land. Genesis 12, 3, I will bless them to bless thee and curse them to curse thee. God made a covenant with Abraham through Isaac. And uh, the, that land is Israel's. Let's go to Joel real quick. Joel chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. For behold, in those days and in that time will I, uh, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat, and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. They're about to part the land of Israel, and judgment will come. Zechariah, I'm going to go back there again. I've been quoting it basically every day lately. Uh, that, but that's just where we're at in the news these days. Zechariah chapter 12. 2, 3, and 9. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about, when they shall be in the siege, both against Judah and against Jerusalem. And in that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces, though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. Verse 9. And, and it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. We are heading into those days, so it is very, very important that you know for sure you are saved. You have made the commitment to follow Jesus Christ. Accept the forgiveness that he gave you at Calvary. Make sure you're saved. Time is running out. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Make sure you're ready. All the signs are here. God bless everyone.